Okay, we're back. One of the amazing things if an open source project is successful, the key project members will usually be able to find somebody to pay them to work on the project or pay them with the idea is that they'll work on the project part-time or something of that type. Um, and, you know, the likes of IBM, Intel, um, Google, uh, all of those people are paying people t that spend all or part of their time doing open source work. Open source examples, um, well, we'll skip these a little bit. But um, um, two of them in the Portland area are Personal Telco. They're a group that um, they're a group that um, puts together uh, wireless systems and uh, helps places like coffee shops um, um, or individuals in houses open up their wireless network to form sort of a spotty cloud throughout the city. It's all volunteer. Um, it's a cool, cool system. Or Caligator, which is Portland's um, event calendar. OK. Uh, one of my recommendations is don't reinvent the wheel. Don't start a new project unless you have to. Projects are hard to start. If you can find one that works already exists, go with it. Uh, it's hard to recruit people and stuff. A lot of people want to start a new project because they want to be head of a project. That's a good way to not do a project very well. Okay, the, um, there's huge amount of open source software out there. The real problem with open source software is finding the right tool for the task. Um, um, I, I usually don't look for the best tool, just look for an acceptable tool because we have so many tools, so little time. Okay, I want to talk just a little bit about a few of my favorite tools here. Very little here, but um, one of them is called Nopix. That's the distribution that if you contact me, I'll give you a copy of. It's an amazing little thing. It's a DVD or CD that has a Linux distribution that runs directly off of the DVD without um, um, installing anything on your hard drive. Thus, it's really great for debugging systems that are broken. You can take a look at the hard drive. If you've got a Windows system that won't boot, boot it on Nopix. Take a look at the hard drive uh, using Nopix. You can often save the data off of it even though the system won't boot. It, it's, a, it's a great system um, and we will be using it some in this class. Um, and we'll talk about I even why it's maybe a little better than some of the other so-called live CDs or live DVDs like uh, live Ubuntu or live OpenSUSE. What a distribution is, is a Linux distribution is basically the Linux kernel the very interior of the operating system thrown together with a lot of open source applications and system software and all put together in a package. So um, think of it a little like a newspaper. People get news stories off the wire service. They get news stories from this colonist or that colonist. And somebody's going to act as an editor and put that all together in a newspaper and then they put a banner at the top that says Willamette Week or um, Chicago Tribune or Portland Oregonian. Um, and the editor, that's a major function. Well, likewise with the open source community, being the editor is a major function and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Linux distributions. Um, some of them are 
general purpose distributions, such as um, the book uses a distribution. It's, it's a variant of the Red Hat distribution called Fedora. Um, I use one a good deal, which is a variant of the SUSE distribution called OpenSUSE. Uh, the most popular distribution around at the moment is called Ubuntu. Uh, that's a fine distribution. Um, one of gr in growing popularity is called OpenSUSE. Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mint Linux or Linux Mint, something like that. I've never used it. Um, other ones would include Debian. Um, Xandros, Turbo Linux. Um, I'm probably missing some really big ones here, but um, enough for now. The other area is what I call special purpose distributions. These are distributions that are usually small and they're just made to do something really well. Um, like Smoothwall and Untangle, which are made to be firewalls. Um, or a star all security Linux. Um, these are all made to be firewalls. Um, so they can be very small distributions, uh, quick to download, but also easy to configure because they're almost pre-configured because they're meant for that task. There's one called MIF TV, which is designed to be a, a DVR for a inter home entertainment system. Um, there's a couple for GIS usage. One is called GIS Nopix. One's called GIS Morphix. And I'm trying to think there's another GIS one, um, Quantum GIS or Quantum Linux. Um, or maybe that's just scientific usage, but it's really good with GIS. As a result, there are various uh, websites that just simply review distributions. There is no such thing as a best Linux distribution. It's the best for whatever you have in mind. You can't talk about a best distribution unless you have a particular use you want to use it for. Um, and if you want to be a Linux or a Unix system administrator, you have to learn to jump from distribution to distribution. You can't go out into the world and tell the world, I'm a Fedora distri uh, a specialist or I'm a Ubuntu specialist. You've got to tell the world, Linux, Unix, yeah, I can do that. And um, um, so even though you may have a favorite distribution, learn to work on all distributions. It's like being a truck driver that can only drive freight liners. Um, you wouldn't get very far in a truck driving business. The future. One of my questions about the future is at one time they were afraid that Windows would kill off uh, Linux and open source software. Well, that's not about to happen. The question is, will the proliferation of all these uh, web applications kill off open source software? I don't think so, but it is a concern um, because um, a lot of our web applications are wonderful, but they do, um, they have a tendency to capture the customer and, or, well, actually they're not the customer because they're not usually paying the bill, but they have a tendency to capture you and trap you in a system. Um, I, I hope that doesn't happen. Learning to be open. Okay. Um, this is what you need to learn to be open. Uh, basically, you've got to work on projects. Work on projects that interest you. Work on projects you need. Join a local users group um, or open source group of some sort and volunteer. Um, uh, contribute to open source projects, and that's not just for programmers. Yes, programmers can contribute, but document. We always need documentation specialists, teachers, um, advocates, and evangelists, testers, web designers, and other support people. Um, there's a way for everybody to contribute. Um, Volunteer in a nonprofit that uses open source. That's a good way to get experience. All of these things are good things to have on your resume, too. They really do help. Um, 
use and read source code. That's a good way to learn, um, to uh, get to understand things better. In, bottom line is participate. And um, um, yes, um, whoops, went. Oh. Okay. The other thing is uh, some people believe in a lot in training and certifications. I, I certainly believe in classes and stuff as being useful. Um, I will say my opinion certifications mean a lot less in open source software than they do in closed source software because there are so many other ways you can display your uh, credentials. Um, I when I've hired people, I tend to hire people that I've seen as volunteers in the local user group, so I know what they're going to be like before I hire them. That means a lot more to me than if somebody brings me a, um, a, a Red Hat certification. Um, so, um, yeah. Open source in Oregon. Here's a few open source uh, groups in Oregon. Uh, Portland Linux Unix group, um, Personal Telco, and there are open source groups now in Portland for almost everything. Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby, I think there may be a C++ group, um, there's a MySQL group, a Postgres group, um, you name it, there is an a group for that in um, in Portland or in Oregon someplace. Um, and the place you find those is, um, the best place to look is at, in Caligator. Um, there are Linux users groups, so-called LUGs, in um, Corvallis, Eugene, Bend, the Oregon coast, Portland of course, um, there's also Free Geek in Portland, which is a computer recycling company. If you've never been there, drop by sometime. It's over in southeast Portland. Look it up, uh, the address at uh, freegeek.org. And uh, they've got a great th thrift store. And, um, they're, and, and they've got great volunteer opportunities that, um, where you can really learn to put systems together and uh, um, tear computers apart, put them together, uh, put Linux on them, configure things. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a great program. Okay, uh, last here we've got some references. Uh, Eric uh, Raymond wrote a book a few years ago called The, the Cathedral and the Bazaar. Well, actually, it's only one chapter in his book, The Cathedral and the Bazaar. He originally wrote it as an essay, and then it got expanded into being a book. Um, it probably talks about some of the stuff I talked about here. I'm not sure. But it, it, it's, it's a great essay. Um, there's also quite a few Linux magazines around. The Linux Journal um, has been a great magazine. Uh, it's going to be an online only magazine starting this month, next month, um, something like that, um, which is too bad. It's been around for years and I think it will be good as an online only magazine too, actually. Um, there's also Linux Magazine, Linux Pro Magazine, Linux, I misspelled format, but well, that's a German spelling. Uh, Linux Format Magazine, um, there's the um, a website for the Free Software Foundation, for Linux International, um, for Linux.org, although the last time I looked at Linux.org it was down. Well, I think with that we will, whoops, we're being called here, we will end this presentation. So, Bye-bye.